In this presentation, we will explore the reasons the inverse square law exists and present two equations that relate the inverse square law to radiation dose and exposure compensation. When reducing dose, distance is the second most effective way to protect yourself from exposure. Why is that? The inverse square law has a very simple premise. The intensity of the radiation changes inversely with the square of the distance between you and the source of radiation. Simply put, radiation intensity changes with the inverse of the distance squared. To state this in mathematical terms, this translates to I equals 1 over d squared. As distance increases, radiation intensity will decrease, and vice versa. This means that a very effective way to reduce radiation exposure is to move away from the source of radiation. Every time you double the distance, your exposure drops by a factor of four times. From the standpoint of X-ray technique, if you source to image distance, you'll need to increase the MAS by a factor of four times to compensate for the loss of radiation intensity. Most radiation travels in straight lines that spreads from a source. In the case of X-rays, that source is the focal spot, or the secondary irradiation arising from an irradiated portion of a patient if you are doing portable work. Divergence means that the radiation is emitted from a source, the focal spot, and spreads out until it fills its container. Here is an X-ray tube surrounded by a lead-lined housing with a hole the tube port where the x-rays can escape the housing. First radiation fills the housing, then escapes the tube port. The radiation is then shaped by the collimator into a rectangular or square field of radiation. Note that the field of radiation widens or diverges as it travels along its path. So divergence accounts for beam reduction in intensity. But where does the square come in? Here is a tube housing and the resultant x-ray beam from a different perspective. The tube is tilted and we see the beam emitted from below. From this perspective, it is evident that the beam diverges in two dimensions. It becomes wider in the x dimension and also becomes longer in the y dimension. The square accounts for the second dimension of spread. So, a two times distance equals four times spread. To sum up, the useful or primary beam forms a pyramid with its apex arising from the focal spot of the anode. As it travels from the apex, it spreads out in an ever-widening, divergent fashion. At some distance, let's call this 1x, it covers a given area, let's call it 1 square. At twice the distance, the spreading, divergent x-ray beam now covers an area four times larger than the previous distance because the radiation expands in two dimensions. Now the same amount of radiation is distributed over a larger area and each square receives one quarter the amount of radiation. If we were to radiograph a foot at the new distance without compensation, it would be underexposed by a factor of four times. Finally, if we were to consider our personal dose, it would be reduced by a factor of four times.
The bad news is the inverse square law involves two similar equations. One that compensates MAS for distance change, and the other that calculates dose as it relates to distance. Let's tackle the dose question first. The basic, the basic equation states that the intensity old over the intensity new equals the distance squared new over the distance old squared. The intensity of radiation will generally be expressed in units of radiation dose, typically sieverts or gray. gray. I realize that these units don't actually measure intensity, but they are reasonable substitutes for intensity units, which are not normally used in our profession. One thing to notice in this equation is that the old and new units are inversely proportional as one increases, the other gets smaller. The most common dose question is that you receive a particular dose of radiation at a given distance. What dose will you receive at a new distance? Here is a question and it involves radiation dose. The word dose is used in the question and the units are expressed in millisieverts, which are units of dose. So, we will use the first form of the inverse square law equation, which includes inverse relationships for the new and old elements. Since the distance increases, you can immediately determine that your answer will be less than two millisieverts because the dose decreases as the distance increases, an inverse relationship. Here the equation solves for the new dose. Here is the equation with the numbers substituted as the variables. And the answer is 0.88 millisieverts. The answer is less than two millisieverts with which we started. As I mentioned earlier, there are two versions of the inverse square law equation that are similar and need to be applied correctly. The second is the MAS compensation version and it is very similar to the intensity equation, but there are two important differences. First, MAS is substituted for intensity. MAS indicating the total amount of radiation used to produce a particular exposure. MAS is also equivalent to radiation dose and intensity. For compensation questions, MA or exposure time may be substituted for MAS since they are directly proportional to MAS and are part of an MAS calculation. The really big difference for this equation is the new and the old elements in the equation are directly proportional. The explanation here is that this equation compensates for a loss of gain of radiation intensity. To compensate for intensity loss, you increase the MAS and vice versa. In this question, you are given an MAS, MA, or exposure time to achieve an acceptable image. What MAS, MA, or exposure time will you use to achieve a similar result at a new distance? The significant clue that this question requires a second form of inverse square law is that the MAS exposure variable is used in this question. You'll be compensating for the increase of exposure intensity. In this situation, the distance decreases, so radiation intensity increases. To compensate, you must decrease the MAS. Your answer will be less than 4 MAS. Here is the equation written, and I have solved for the new MAS. In this version of the equation, the numbers for the variables. And the answer is 1.24 MAS, which is smaller than 4 MAS.
This will compensate for an increase in radiation intensity seen at a shorter source to image distance. Remember, before answering an inverse square law question, always ask yourself the question, will the answer be larger or smaller than the starting MAS or dose? Inverse square law response is not linear. Two times change has a four times effect. I must also remember that the more distance equals less radiation intensity, and the opposite is true. The intensity form of the equation is used to report what happens to a dose as distance changes. The more distance increases, the more MAS is required to compensate for an intensity loss. The MAS equation compensates for radiation intensity change so that old MAS is proportional to old distance squared. Thank you for your kind attention. This will end this presentation.